the captain of Crusher's GC and the 2024 U.S. Open champion, Bryson DeChambeau! Gosh, I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> Won the Saudi Open on the Asian Tour in April, and he won the International Series event in Macau in March, beating David Pooj in a playoff. Here's a man with nine career wins, three of them on the DP World Tour. 33 years of age from Sacramento, and he is making the most of his chance. I remember John Catlin playing as a reserve for Charles Howell III, who's injured. If he were to go on to win this, he, he gets those points. That would move him right at the top 24 number. Move him at 20th currently. Yeah, another beautiful shot. This guy's making this look so easy. So well having done. a day. The Englishman six at the par. He shares the lead with Abraham Answer for the time being at least. Now this. Is Abraham Ansa to stay at seven under and in all likely have the overnight lead? And that is wonderfully done. Abe Ansa with a 64. This is what Live Golf's about, man. I, I, I had a vision of this two, three years ago, seeing what the potential could be, and this is just the start. I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of live. Welcome in a very happy uh, Thursday to you. And I know it's Thursday because it's week one of the college football season. We are off and running here. Plenty of college football here tonight. We got a smattering of Major League Baseball games going on. But of course, it's all about CFB here in game live primetime. Joe and Ari alongside. Dave Sherapan here, and we'll get you covered with everything that's going on uh, across these sports here tonight. A couple of games that are getting ready to get started. Uh, and of course, the one that seems to be getting the most hype at the sports book, Dave, is the game that's happening in Boulder here, just about ready to kick off involving uh, the University of Colorado, uh, Deion mm -hmm. Sanders and the gang. Getting ready to go against North Dakota State. So I'm seeing 11 and a half now. Ironically enough, the total has dropped a little bit. Uh, 54 and a half. So it was 55s here uh, today. But I guess it should be no shock that Dion is uh, the most, I guess, uh, interesting team and head coach and game tonight where the public is running to the window. Uh, to back them, I guess. Uh, yeah. I, not a lot of faith in North Dakota State here. I don't know why. I don't know either. It's one of those situations where I think the uh, pent-up excitement Ooh. really shows, and college football has really done a good job with giving you something to bet on on Thursday. Saturday's mm -hmm. going to be electric from yes. the time – you first wake up in the morning. I love the West Coast start time, 9 a.m., and then all the way all night. But tonight, this one, there was a little bit of hesitation, you could tell, from the books to not go past the 10, and they waited, and they waited, and the money came on the favorite. So saw it go up to 11, 11 and a half in a lot of places, and come back to 11 this morning. North Dakota State, I think the books have made their decision that they are going to be Bison fans and root against the Buffalo, North Dakota State it is. Um, the total is pretty surprising, Joe. That thing went down six points. It's, I, I mean, know. the current number is close at 54 at three or four of the places that I'm looking at. It was as high as 58, 56 and a half on the graphic. I don't know what to make of these. 
Like I really don't. Yeah. I mean, it would a team would have win a win total of five with Colorado's is they're playing a team that like North Dakota State is not your average team that's gonna just come and take the paycheck that they get for coming to Boulder and and, and playing the game. They're trying to win a game. And they may be they that's may correct. be competitive. I think we'll see multiple numbers here on in game live while we're while we're watching this game. It's gonna be fun. I think uh, I I agree with you. Right now, we do have a upset in the making, the first one uh, of the board here tonight. As and it's ironic too because we were oh another fumble. This is just oh buckle up, folks. Number twenty four, North Carolina State is losing seven nothing to Western Carolina wow. at home. Wow. Grayson McCall, the former, uh, you may recall, a uh, former quarterback there that, in fact, uh, at Coastal Carolina, who is also getting ready to kick off here and take on Jacksonville State with Rich Rod there and his uh, Jacksonville State team. But uh, he is now the quarterback of North Carolina State. He's already thrown an interception, which was returned inside the five, and they punched it in for a touchdown. Good old uh, Western Carolina. But now they fumbled the ball on their own 30-yard line, giving the ball back to Western Carolina. It's 7 nothing there. Now, Dave, that game was 25, 27. I mean, it was almost four touchdowns. North Carolina State was a favorite in that one. They are now, I am seeing, 17, 17 and a half uh, point favorites here. So, uh, it could be uh, one of those nights, Dave, where the big 20, 30 point favorites may struggle a little bit to cover these games like we saw in week zero. Hmm. I feels think like the books are going to make a lot of money here tonight. It, it just it, feels it, like it, the it, books uh, are going to make a lot. <laughs> folks need the dogs. The dogs outright yep. usually end up being a good result. Now, I mean, Colorado, North Dakota State, the way this number's moving, and without actually yes. being behind the counter and watching, a favorite win but a dog cover is probably the ideal sweet spot for that one. You know, Correct. so North Dakota State loses by less than 10, and they don't even have to worry about nothing. That would be probably Correct. perfect. Um, yep. They would like, uh, I'm going to guess, an over, which is Jeez. a weird situation. They probably don't usually uh, – I mean, I know we needed unders way more than we needed overs. But when a number falls six points, I'm going to guess they're going to go, okay, let's get a shootout. And, wow, North Dakota State almost fumbled the ball in the first play. And Yeah, but they completed the a pass. He he completed a pass for 70 yards. He's not, he took it to the 20. Wow. Uh, they're so inside. Where was wow. the defense? Shocker. Where, where was the what defense? defense? What defense? That was same last year. Where was the Colorado defense last year? Oh, yeah, that's right. They were on the field the whole time because they couldn't get off it, and they ain't going to be able to get off the field this year either. And am I wrong? I mean, North Carolina State is one of the powerhouses of, you know, FBS here and FCS. This is a team that reloads. They've got a ton of returning starters on the offense. They have both starting running backs uh, returning. In the meantime, you've got Deion Sanders, who lost over 40 players to the transfer portal. They all couldn't wait to get the hell out of there after last year. And davey has got 55 new scholarship players here who've never played with one another, and they've never had a chance to practice. So I, it, call, call me crazy here, folks, but early on in the season, when you have teams that have continuity, have experience, have guys returning. We saw it with Georgia Tech against Florida State. They may have all the talent in the world, and they got a ton of talented guys on this Colorado team, Dave, but they're still going up against a team that's playing with each other, a lot of these guys, two, three years. That matters early on in the season. Just ask Florida State. Oh, yeah. No, there's more There's more questions than answers. Ooh. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Boy, we're going to – I'm excited because we've been talking about baseball all summer long, and, you know, baseball really does take a back seat. There's a great baseball game later tonight, and I'm sure we'll we'll discuss it at some point uh, with the Orioles and the Dodgers and what Shohei Otani's doing, different things like that. But we're going to talk about red zone defense, red zone offense, kickers, 
efficient, you know, making field goals or not. Um, the one good thing I, I, I'm happy about, Joe, is that we won't have to talk about the kickoff rule in in college football. Like, we, we, we know that they still kick the ball off. There's no landing zone. There's so many things about college football that differ from the NFL between, you know, the crowds, the bands, the uniforms, all that stuff. I still love, love, love watching college football. I feel like we get – it. Just, I don't want to say it's more pure. It's just not mm-hmm. as over-officiated, right? I, would you agree? Not yet, uh, but it will be in certain conferences, uh, in certain <laughs> teams, in certain games that you will absolutely see over-officiating taking place. And, uh, oh, look at that, the NC State – Comes back, Grayson McCall, uh, with a touchdown pass. It is now tied at seven apiece there with Western Carolina. Um, We do have a delay also, uh, we should know. One of the big games here tonight between the ACC and the Big Ten uh, was North Carolina taking on Minnesota. Uh, That game is now going to be kicking off after at the top of next hour there, a little after 9 o'clock Eastern time, they're saying. So that game has been delayed. There is some weather in Minnesota. Shocker. There's some weather in Minnesota here. So uh, we will run down the scoreboard, get you caught up on everything as in-game live primetime continues next on The Grid. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former super contest winners brady cannon and james salinas a former nfl player mike pritchard and over one million dollars in contest prize money won combined the las vegas football contest show will have you prepared this season like none other Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 Hit Club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, He'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live Primetime here on the Sports Grid Network. And speaking of primetime, uh, Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes, uh, they are down 3 0 after North Dakota State opened a game with a field goal. Colorado is driving just about a couple of minutes into the first quarter here, second and one for Colorado. That is one of the big games on right now. A delay in Minnesota and North Carolina. Uh, the Big Ten versus ACC, uh, not until the top of the hour. There was some weather in the area, uh, so that game is going to be delayed just a hair. We also have 
uh, off and running one of the better Major League Baseball games. A lot of early games here today, uh, Dave, yep. but the uh, Houston Astros at home as a as a decent favorite over the can- Red Hot Kansas City Royals. Uh, Royals plus 135 on the money line. Uh, taking on the Astros, Hunter Brown taking on Brady Singer, two guys that really the top of the rotation for both these teams. And a big reason as to why both of these teams are in the postseason hunt here. And uh, they are no score here, top of the first. And now it looks like Hunter Brown just struck out um, Salvatore Perez. So that is heading to the bottom of the first, uh, no score. Colorado, Travis Hunter, a 41-yard TD reception, Dave. To get Colorado on the board, anybody I I thought points were coming in this one, uh, Dave. I don't know why that total was getting steamed last minute down fifty four and a half, but it does feel like if Colorado has their way, they will score a uh, hundred points in this game if they're given the opportunity. I don't see Dion taking his foot off the gas for anything this year. There is no chance he's taking his foot Mm-mm. off the gas. Not nope. They're gonna. When they are um, nope. a better team, you know, which the power rating obviously tells you that, the point spread tells you that, I think they're going to go and they're going to they're gonna keep scoring because uh, their season wins is going under. I mean, if you look Correct. at the schedule, I don't think they're going to win more than five games and it's, it's a real chance that it's four. So, uh, yeah, expect points. Uh, hit refresh here in a second. The baseball game is interesting. Because both of these teams, if you'd have told me before a month ago, two months ago, before the season, that the Astros and the Royals would be playing in Houston in late August, August 29th, and both would be in the playoffs if the season ended today, probably wouldn't have believed you. I mean, Astros, yes, but the Royals have been just fantastic. One of the better stories of baseball all summer long, all season long. Bobby Wood Jr. has been great. And... I don't know. I, I I saw this number. I mean, even a smart projection on the, on the screen has the Royals as a over fifty uh, percent chance to win. So I don't know. Uh, I, I I lean Royals before the game. Probably another under, but either one of these teams capable of laying it on the other team and getting the game over. But I think this is uh this might be a playoff preview. You know, first round matchup. Uh, if the Royals get in, they probably end up playing the Astros. So this will be fun. We'll keep an eye on it. Baseball takes such a back burner, though, Joe, doesn't it? Now, I mean, you're looking at uh, games involving like Rutgers and Howard. People are keeping an eye on that game. Nobody's really watching Duquesne and Toledo, but Murray State against Missouri, a 40 point spread, 43 point spread, and a, a 59 total. I hated those games. So nobody's really watching Astros Royals, right? Well, I'm just gonna. I mean, it just started here now. So, uh, but I, I'm with you. I do like the under, especially early in this one, because I hate that Royals uh, bullpen here. But yeah. uh, they uh, Altuve and company are up now. We'll see how that goes. The Phillies once again are are proving that the best baseball they've played might have already happened uh this year. They're down 4 nothing to Charlie Morton in the bot in the top of the 6th inning here. Sanchez hasn't thrown bad, but the Phillies bats went and now correct me, uh, they got shut out against Houston yesterday, so that's 9 innings. Now they're in the mm-hmm. they've went 5, so it's 14 innings without a run at home now for the Philadelphia Phillies as they're down 4 nothing here, Dave. That is worrisome. Uh, to say the least, especially against Charlie Morton, who these guys have owned over the years. So uh, I'm a little, I'm a little head scratching here with Philadelphia with this team's like Jekyll and Hyde now, which is not great. And by the way, uh, there are only five games ahead of Atlanta. There's four games this week, and all of a sudden, come Monday, Atlanta could be a game and a half out of the lead in the National League East. Who saw that coming? Yeah, it's one of those things that. We saw it last year, right? Philadelphia goes home against uh, Arizona, up three games to two, and I think they got two hits in two games. And the fact that they could have, like yesterday, shut out today, would you say, into the through five, top of the sixth, it's Atlanta four. It's 14 innings. Yeah, that's – 
that's I don't want to say that's setting worrisome. off alarms, but that's it's yeah. very worrisome. It's very <laughs> worrisome crazy. that I mean this is this is what happens in the playoffs, right? You see a good pitcher, and the next day you see another good pitcher, and then if you get to the third game with a day off in between, you see another good pitcher. So yep. the fact that the Phillies have either swing and miss stuff or can go cold uh, even at home, something to keep in mind, put in the memory banks for, for later. Yep. I, I mean, they're making the playoffs. That, they don't got to worry about the Phillies making the playoffs. But uh, the Braves are right there, and the Mets won't go away. I don't know how many teams they got to jump, and they're going to hang around. They keep finding ways to win. National League East is fun. Yep. No, it's it's going to be a race to the finish, no doubt. The whole National League is going to be a race to the finish for the uh, wild card spot there. So uh, nothing should be taken for granted down the stretch, which is great because that's really what we want is meaningful baseball, right? The last couple of weeks of the season, that's why they created the extra spot. Uh, so baseball has an idea of what they're doing. Uh, the Also, the late game, of course, will be uh, Baltimore, who – has found a team they like to beat here in the Dodgers. Uh, that game is coming up uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern time. That should be a fun one, too, although I'm expecting a few more runs in this one here tonight with those two gas cans on the mound. Uh, another upset alert, by the way. Western Carolina has just run down the field on NC State. It's 14-7, to 7, Western Carolina. More on that when in-game live primetime continues. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in game live prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe and Ari alongside Dave Sherapan. We are off and running week one of the college football season. It is here, and uh, Thursdays will never be the same here for quite a while as football is back and college football, especially here. We got uh, games tonight. We got games tomorrow. We got games Saturday. I think we got one or two Sunday and then Monday and welcome back. College football should be a good one. We do have actually a pretty good one. A couple of good games going on right now. 
We did think uh, the game in Boulder was going to be exciting, and it is exactly that, as it took Colorado less than three minutes to march on down the field. A, uh, I believe it was a Shador Sanders to Hunter touchdown, 41 yards, took less than three minutes. The problem is nobody told North Dakota State they weren't supposed to immediately march right down the field and score again, and that's exactly what they're doing. Second and goal right now. It's 7-3 Colorado in that one, Dave. We are well on to our over spot in yeah. this game. An upset alert, top 25, number 24, North Carolina State at home, losing to Western Carolina 14-7. to Grayson McCall, the new uh, quarterback there, former Coastal Carolina quarterback, which feels like, I don't know. You like these whole uh, nine years in college. Uh, it feels like he's oh. been there forever. It feels like Max Johnson in North Carolina has been playing college for seven years. Uh, Bowman at Oklahoma State is going to be like 38. Like he played nine. It just feels like it's like, wow. So we got a whole lot of dudes like playing seven, eight years in college. Is is, is that seem right to you? No. It's it's crazy, actually. And mm. now, with the movement being so yeah. much, it's just like, all right, well, I'm not playing here, and I got another year, I'll just go here. And um, Matt hit me today on BBB with an unbelievable stat. The average pay, according to the collective, the NIL collective, uh, for quarterbacks in Division right. One football, $1.5 million. $1.5 million, whether this is your first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, who knows, but it behooves a lot of guys to stay in college and move around and play. And guess what? North Dakota State, touchdown. I mean, yep. Joe, this is a track meet. What was that move to the under? Not happening. No I idea. I to wait for this thing to come back up, but my goodness, they went down the field pretty easily. A couple quick yep. plays and 10 plays, 75 yards in five and a half minutes. We got ourselves a football game, Joe. This is yes, going to be we fun. Do. Yes. You know, and, and yes, we do. Uh, it's one of those ones where you kind of like sit there and you go, if you have a North Dakota State ticket and you have plus 11, plus 11 and yes. a half, you're going, man, why didn't I play the money line? Right? Like, you know, gamblers. That's correct. Joe are doing that yep. thing right now going, man, I should have just taken the money line. They're going to win this game. Everybody relax. A lot of football yep. left to be played in Boulder. Today. Calm down. Ton of football left to be played at Boulder. 10 7 no Total 61 and a half in game uh, on that one right now. A, a heartbreak here is North Carolina State had a 70-yard touchdown called back for a holding. Uh, and now... You can get them 14 and a half uh, in the second quarter. They are down seven. Dave, that game closed 32 and a half. North Carolina State was laying 32 and a half at home against Western Carolina. It's now 14 to seven. And boy, oh boy, uh, it looks like they're going to have to punt the ball away back to Western Carolina. So that's a game worth keeping an eye on there. Also, another close one, uh, Dave, which... I didn't expect was um, you, you've got actually a couple of them actually were a little bit Wake Forest 14 to 10 against North Carolina A&T. Yep. I didn't see that one coming uh, as another monster <laughs> favorite there at home Wake Forest. I mean, that was that's crazy. They're at the break there, Dave, and it's 14 to 10 Wake Forest. Joe, I, I, I can't believe how many teams being on the board on the schedule and i'm thinking wow. is this college basketball or college football i didn't I'm know north you. carolina a &E had a football team between them how are, you, how and, are they gonna and, make money and, what are they doing uh you gotta go to you gotta go to wake forest and collect that check but uh, as long as you're there you might as well eat right because that's, that's exactly cool. what right? they're doing yeah. that's exactly careful what you wish for wake forest We'll have an update across the scoreboard when in-game live prime time continues.
the sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes. Jefferson a better player, if you want to believe that. I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going in a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live, a prime time here on the Sports Grid Network as uh, we're keeping an eye on uh, college football. Actually, uh, it's got a nice ring to it here. Also, got a couple of eyeballs on uh, tonight's Major League Baseball games. Only three games remain right now. Still no score with the Royals and the Astros. But let's not forget, in addition to Major League Baseball and, of course, college football. We have the FedEx Cup Championship underway at East Lake. And no doubt Brady Cannon has been watching all day long. And quite honestly, it uh, it was a hell of a golf season, uh, Brady. Want to thank you for coming on. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's a good time. Congratulations, <laughs> Scotty Scheffler. There's really no point in talking about anything else. But uh, Scotty Scheffler, who uh, we were told can't play at East Lake. Uh, nobody told him that, though. Uh, my goodness, what a opening round here today. Uh, just unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> you know, for all intents and purposes, he ended it on day one. And, and so everybody yep. knows, no, he's not. He didn't shoot 16 under today. He was the number one player for the season in the FedEx Cup points. So he gets to start at 10 under par. Xander Shoffley was second. He gets to start at eight under. Hideki was third. He starts at seven. On down the list, the top 30 players, the guys that were 25, 26, 25 through 30, they start at, e at even par. So, you know, they start their Thursday 10 shots off the lead. They basically have no chance. And you're right, Joe. Coming in, we said Xander's the best horse for this course. He's been absolutely incredible at East Lake. Scotty's been so-so, hasn't been too bad, but no, not really as good as Xander's been or as good as Rory McIlroy has been in their career at this particular golf course. Scotty went out today and goes, guys, forget all that. I I'm still here. I'm the gold medal winner. I'm the guy that won seven times this year. I am the best in the whole freaking world. And don't you forget it. And by the way, he shot the low round of the day. There's a, lot, there's yep. a handful of guys that shot five under. Scotty shot six under and now has a seven-shot advantage. He's minus 400. He's minus 350, I've seen. That's the lowest price I've seen. And I'll tell you what, I don't think minus 350 is a bad price. I mean, you might as well go ahead and bet it. I think he has 75 to 80% chance of winning this. You know, maybe there's a one in four chance that somebody comes back and catches him. 
But that what you've got, if you if you don't have Scotty, what you've got going in your favor is that he was nearly flawless today. If you're a guy like me on Xander Schauffele, he looked like, I mean, we were almost tied going into the back nine. And I thought oh. it was key that Xander missed a birdie putt on number 10. And his day seemed to go just sideways after that. So Schauffele couldn't have been much worse. He was like, tw- this is out of 30 guys. He was like 22nd in strokes gained off the tee, 19th in strokes gained approach, 22nd in strokes gained putting. He was awful. So he ought to get better. And Scotty was so good, you would you would expect that he'll come back a little bit. That's about the only chance we've got. Otherwise, this is truly over. Yeah, it's mm. it's strange to say that it gets down to the last event and this can happen where I mean, you're a golf guy. You're a ball striker. Everybody knows that, BK. You write the articles. You know the format. And you're saying it's over. Do you like this format? Like, is this no. something that the PGA is going to address? It, it, like, something's got to change, Please, no? please, a- absolutely. And and this is perfect. I, I hope Scotty – I mean, I, I, I lose my bet on Xander, but I kind of hope Scotty runs away with it, just like he did today for the next three days because – I, I think the, the tour has to know this is an imperfect system. Okay. I mean, mm. Keegan Bradley just won for the first time last week and hasn't finished in the top 20 in three months. But if he somehow, you know, catches fire this week, he wins the FedEx Cup and becomes, quote unquote, the player of the year. That's not right. Scotty's the player of the year. So he definitely deserves to win this. But I mean, it. I don't. The, the tour didn't want it to be over in one day. You know, if if a guy dominates the 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 season, you know, from January to August, should he only get a two shot advantage in the final event? And what if this golf course mm. doesn't fit him? It's just, it's totally a flawed system. The 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 playoffs. I love the playoffs. You know, trying to get into the top seventy, trying to get into the top fifty, and then ultimately, like mm. last week trying to get into the top 30. That's all really fun. But now you got 30 guys and this staggered scoring and it, it's so anticlimactic. You know, their, their Super Bowl, and especially from a betting standpoint, their Super Bowl is the worst event of the year. And I think they know that, Dave. And and hopefully this triggers change. Probably not. Uh, let's face it. Uh, they probably uh, will not change uh, anything uh, on it here. But... I will say this. I got to give credit to a couple of the other guys here that are still fighting along. I mean, I thought Morikawa was going to birdie every hole in the back nine. I think he opened up with six straight birdies on the back nine. Uh, He's I mean, who did you have really besides Xander and Scheffler? Who was another who was your other guy that you thought might have been the dark? I didn't think Matsuyama was going to play. Quite honestly, I was shocked to see him out there uh, today. But Adam Scott, the old guard, is still Keegan Bradley, still rolling in there. But who who was the other choice you had here? Well, it's a good question, Joe. And I tell you what, if anyone can find a market out there, now they had this pre-tournament, and, and Dave, so you know too, there was a, a starting strokes market, and then there was just right. who would be the low score for 72 holes, like a regular golf tournament. Throw the handicaps right. out. Who Ooh. scores the lowest for four days? And I thought Aaron Rye was a good bet, a long shot at 50 to one. He shot five under today. I thought Justin Thomas was the pretty good yeah. play. He's won here before. He shot five under today. And I thought Victor Hovland was a good play who made seven birdies today. I mean, he was on fire. The problem oh. is he, he also made two double bogeys. But the point mm. is, I think oh. he can catch fire, you know, over the next three days and possibly still be in that in that conversation for who will shoot the low score over the course of four days without the strokes. So if you can find a market with adjusted odds without the starting strokes, I think those guys, those three guys right there are still alive. Aaron Rye's been red hot this summer. Justin Thomas, he's, like I said, he's won at this golf course before, um, played very, very well today. And if you look at his numbers, he was really steady. Wasn't really off the charts in any one area where you would think there might be some regression. He was just really steady across the board. Now, Hovland was a little bit volatile, but I think mm. he's shown that he could catch fire at any minute here. You know, I mean, he made he probably made more birdies maybe than ever anyone than other than Scotty today. So, you know, if you again, if you can find that without strokes market, 
Thomas Hovland and, and the guy you mentioned, Morikawa and Aaron Rye, I think are all still very live to be the low 72 hole score. Mm. BK, now that the golf's over, we could turn the page. I mean, that's a great breakdown and all the other stuff, but we got football contests. We got NFL starting one week from today. And I know you're looking ahead at the games. Give the people, because you got the show on, it's going to be on the grid and all that other stuff. Up and Salinas getting back together is nothing but a good thing. Throw Pritchard in there, and that's a hell of a parlay for the people. But I mean, next week at this time, we're going to be talking about Kansas City laying three against the Ravens. Any side total or anything that we should talk about there? Dave, I, I think Baltimore is really due for a slip. I mean, I know they're kicking themselves for the championship game last year when everybody in the world thought they were going to run the ball down Kansas City's throat, and they decided to get cute and uh, say, you know what, we're going to surprise them and pass the ball. Well, they surprised themselves and found themselves not in the Super Bowl. And I think uh, Baltimore is ready for a slip. I mean, if you look at their turnover margin, I think they were plus 12 in turnover margin, like plus 19 in penalty margin. Everything was so positive for Baltimore last season. I think they're due to regress. I still don't think they have a great receiving core. Um, I, I think Derrick Henry's 30 years old and is not going to move the needle. I think Kansas City, by the way, last year was the year to catch them. They actually were not mm. that great last year. This year, they're better. If you can find a two and a half, they're out there. I'd lay it with the Chiefs. Plenty more to come. Brady, always a pleasure, my man. In-game live primetime continues on the grid. sharpest football contest show in the land the las vegas football contest show focuses on circus sports million circus survivor and the westgate super contest handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season with two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the quay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic, most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes. Jefferson a better player, if you want to believe that. I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live, and we are prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. German area alongside Dave Sherapin. A quick update at Citizens Bank Park right now. Philadelphia uh, hits a three run home run to make it a 4 3 game now. Atlanta on top there. They're in the top of the seventh. It only took them, oh, I don't know, six innings finally to be able to score a run in the last two games, but they are down one. Uh, in this one here against Atlanta, a very important series for both these teams uh, heading into this weekend here. Still 2 nothing. Toronto over 
the Boston Red Sox here. And uh, no score there with the Royals and Houston, which is good news, Dave, because we uh, we like the first five under in that one and the full game under. And that is the direction we are heading. Coming up top of uh, next hour, in fact, I believe, just after 10 o'clock Eastern, uh, we've got Baltimore and the Dodgers, uh, which we'll talk about uh, coming up next hour. In the meantime, Shador Sanders, it took him another three passes to go uh, 80 yards and score a touchdown in that one, Dave. Uh, that'll be one of the big mysteries early on here in this uh, college football season is who in the world was betting an under with North, uh, North Dakota State and Colorado. The in-game total, Dave, you're ready, 70 and a half. <laughs> it's still 10 and a half. It's a 14 to 10 game. Uh, they're still there. Another uh, very strange one. The high school, Lindenwood High School, I believe. I yeah. think I played against a Lindenwood High School. Did you? Uh, <laughs> they are hanging against Kansas, number 22 Kansas. They're into the second <laughs> quarter. It's just 7 nothing Kansas. Uh, that's another team that was laying nearly 40 points against Lindenwood here. Uh, yeah. Coastal Carolina all over Jacksonville State. Not good mm. uh, for Rich Rod at home. Jacksonville State, who I believe was uh, was really good at home last seven and one they were uh, at home last year, but not so good as Coastal Carolina is up seventeen to three in that one. And I believe North Carolina State, Dave, just went for it on fourth and one and got stuffed. So that game remains fourteen to fourteen, and again. Right. Number 24, North Carolina State, was a 32-and-a-half-point favorite at home against Western Carolina, and they are knotted up at 14 apiece. Still five minutes ago before the break there. This is shaping up to maybe a North Carolina State second-half play, Dave. What are you thinking? Without watching it, I hate to recommend that that's the play. But if the line is that further adjusted, it probably will be. Now, if they get the ball at to home, start, you got to know yeah. who gets the ball to start the second half. Very important piece of information yes. before you make a second half wager. So if you know you're getting the ball, we're tied, and you're laying less than 14, it's probably numbers-wise. That's The teams that pull off these upsets are able to do it for the first half, right? They just – the Correct. depth isn't there, and things happen in the second half where – Teams are able to impose their will. They get the, and the uh, coaching advantage. Right, you, exactly. You need and right. You, North Carolina the, State has a huge coaching advantage here and has depth. And all yes, of at home, yeah. I would not want to be in that locker room if I'm North Carolina State at halftime. Uh, if this thing is knotted but up at fourteen, they're one apiece. of the teams near the top of the ACC. And correct, you no, know, right? It was Florida State, yep. Miami, and. Yep. North Carolina, dark course. Clemson, yeah, uh, all at the yeah. top, and and NC State was right there. So, yep. I mean, if Florida State loses outright in the neutral game against Georgia Tech. Mm -mm -mm. This isn't a good start. Now, well, that nope. some people watching the show, and this used to happen in the book all the time. They're like, "Oh, the ACC is not nearly as good as it was supposed to be." So they'll like come to the window now and bet on Minnesota just because. One right. thing isn't related to the other. You Nothing. can't make that snap judgment at all. But correct. Like people will do that. You've heard that before, right? They'll naturally do that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. What as if uh the universe is a lot. I don't want to hear about the universe. Uh I can't bet no. based upon what the universe the universe should have given me the last six Powerball numbers over the last uh, 20 years, but it hasn't done that. So Just I can't time. count on the universe uh yeah. exactly. Like Just the universe one. is not paying attention. So uh yeah. it has nothing to do with whether or not uh the ACC is gonna get blown out because Florida State lost. Uh I will say though that game is scheduled to go. In about 15 minutes, they're saying now, Dave. So Minnesota, okay. North Carolina, still one and a half, 51 and a half. I can't for the life of me figure out this total either. I don't understand why it's getting – we obviously have weather. It's not a, a dome where Minnesota plays. So right. if there's obvious weather in the area and it gave us a delay, it's raining all day and it's supposed to rain all night, uh, and we've got – New offenses on both sides, new coordinators, new. How are we getting? They played last year 
And North Carolina had, mind you, a first-round draft pick and the backup quarterback for the Patriots now, Drake May. Uh, right. He was under center, and they only scored 44 points. So how in the world are we only getting – how are we still betting this thing up and over? 51 and a half, and it's still trending to the over. Uh, and you know what? I, I just talked myself into taking uh, another <laughs> piece of the under. Uh, I have no idea. And listen, if this yeah. Colorado game is any indication, Dave, of what we're getting in the markets early on, I'm all for it. Because there is no way I would have spent money on an under in Colorado and San Diego State. I just would not have done it. Because uh, I do think they can score 50 points themselves, Dave, in this game. Right. I haven't seen yeah. any ability of of North Dakota State to stop them. It could be a monster night for him. Yeah, could Huge. be. It's 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 one of those ones where I like um, I got it on right over here and right. doing the show. We're talking, but watching it without the sound, this is the exact way that I watched games. You know, when I was yep. down in the Caribbean, we had a wall of TVs, but we watched the games without sound. Get in a risk room in Vegas, same thing. A big wall of TVs up front, no sound. Your eyes see one thing and your ears see another. Yep. I mean, hopefully you're watching us as a second screen experience, watching the games, listening to us at least. Um, this looks like a track meet on belief. <laughs> this is not just looks. It, this this <laughs> could be an Olympic event. Uh, yeah. That's how fast they're running up and down the field. <laughs> Unbelievable. In game live, prime time next year on the grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth in there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually going to be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 Hit Club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than C.D. Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be the starter running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in as we look to close out this first hour together here in game live prime time. And uh, I'm telling you, don't blink. You're going to miss a score in Boulder as North Dakota State marches down the field, scores a touchdown. It is now 17 to 14 over Colorado. 12 minutes to go, Dave, in the <laughs> second quarter. And we've already. Uh, we're already at 31 points. Uh, the in-game total was 70. This might, I, I can't imagine 
where this is going to go from here. The problem is it's only taking Colorado two and a half minutes to march down the field and score. Right. You got to wonder at one point, do they do they slow it down? I just think Colorado is going to be like, let's go toe to toe. You want to score 70? We'll score 70 and let's let's keep it rolling. The problem is they have no answer on defense for North Dakota State either. Zero. It it might be first team to 50 wins this yes. game. Right? It oh, might boy. be first team to oh, 50. Boy. And, oh, boy. Um, uh, North Dakota State, they're sustained drives, right? They've made a couple third mm-hmm. down conversions. Colorado's two scores are less than five plays. Right, just down the field, yep. long plays, seventy yard touchdown for the second one. Um, was it sharp money, or was it respected money, or was it? I can't keep track of on an under. It, on Who the in under, the right like, mind, the right? public is betting an under in Colorado. No right. way. Yes. No I, way. I just you can't keep track of of all the no things way. in the public and the people and the. I like to call them the rhombuses and the parallelograms because I really wasn't good at geometry in school, but I like the terms. And Ooh. nobody gets upset when you call them a rhombus or a parallelogram because they don't even know what you're talking about. But they That's were all correct. on the other. And yes, uh, uh, 71 and a half right now. I think I might go over. That's ridiculous. And I don't think it's enough, Dave. I mean, call I don't me crazy. Think it I don't is think either. it's enough. Nope. Nope. Uh, Shador Sanders, five of five, a buck 34 and two touchdowns. And we got 12 minutes in the second quarter. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, Castellanos, a two run home run. The Phillies oh. on top five, four now, oh. uh, here in the bottom of the seventh. They actually went to the bullpen, uh, in order to pitch to him. And, uh, good job because he hit the ball dead center field for a two run home run. So it is now five, four Philadelphia bottom of the seventh against the Braves. Uh, Bowden Francis has done seven innings uh, tonight, Dave. This was a big one. Toronto, for those that uh, that hadn't been following, Toronto Blue Jays, young pitcher, Bowden Francis. He's been, he almost threw a no-hitter last time out against the Angels. Yep. He gave up the, uh, the home run in the ninth. Uh, but he has been, he struck out 12, I think, in that game. He has been an absolute machine for Toronto. His strikeout prop was five and a half here tonight. Boston has no problem striking out at home, but I think he only gave up one hit, seven one innings, hit. Yep. five, five strikeouts. So he did not go over his K prop here, which is kind of crazy uh, when you think about it there. But another great outing from this kid, uh, Dave, for Toronto, who once again, since the All-Star break, I guess once there's no pressure on you to win games, <laughs> I guess this is what you do is you start crushing a ball and, and winning games and finding pitchers in the minors that you held on to and didn't bring up in time. Like, I don't know what's going on with this organization. Yeah, this is one of those things that, you know, things are going to move around next week and we're going to have primetime football on Thursdays and, you know, primetime oh. football on Monday. So you and I aren't going to be doing the shows together. But this is one of those things that I would say to put in your memory banks, put in your chat groups. Yep. Um, Bowden Francis, the rest of the season will be most likely grossly mispriced because when they're playing a team with a winning record, like the Yankees, you know, he's going to be a big plus the opportunities to take Toronto in the first five, when he pitches as well as in the games, did North Dakota State just stop Colorado? Yes, they do. They stuffed them on fourth and one in their own end. They're going to. They're going to take the ball over what in there. That's correct. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, um, they're, they're oh, going to be a hundred points in this game. Look at it. Look at Pat Schumer is just screaming right now. Uh, the offensive court, former, uh, head coach in the NFL, giant fans remember him all too well. So do Minnesota Viking fans. Uh, now the oh, OC my. at uh, Colorado. And if he keeps calling plays like that on fourth and, uh, one, uh, Dion might have to take over play calling. Uh, so it is now a – they're at the 35, it looks like, of Colorado. They're taking yeah. over 10 minutes here, 17 to 14. Oh, and Sanders is hurt, so that's great. Uh-oh. All right, we'll get you an update here when we get back. Another hour in-game live, prime time on the grid.
the sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, buckle up. We have got all sorts of upset alerts here for you on this Thursday night. College football is back. Welcome in in game live primetime here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe and Ari alongside the one and only Dave Sherapan. And we have got upsets galore right now. We'll start in Boulder, where Colorado. As a uh, almost 11 point favorite at home, opening the season against uh, good old FCS uh, North Dakota State. Uh, and a lot of people were upset, thinking, What are you kidding me? How is this not more like uh, three touchdowns here for Colorado at home? Well, the answer is they're losing 17 to 14, and uh, North Dakota State here has got the ball. They're inside the 20 uh, yep. with about seven and a half to go. So more points are coming in that one. So upset alert in Colorado. Upset alert here in North Carolina. North Carolina State, in fact, number 24 in the country. They are knotted up with lowly West Carolina, 14 apiece. And they just turned the ball over on fourth and one from their own 12-yard line, Dave. Instead of kicking the field goal, they went for it, and they lost five yards. Western Carolina going to take over. Uh, with less than a minute to go in the first half. This is a game worth keeping an eye on the second half number. We promised you we'll do that uh, because, Dave, I'm telling you right now, it's uh, second half is going to be very interesting for some of these teams that were big favorites. And North Carolina State was laying 32 and a half, folks. Uh, <laughs> so there is going to be some adjustments at the break here. Also, Tulsa can't pull away from Northwestern State. They were a three-touchdown favorite in that one there, 21-14 there. Uh, Tulane up 14 nothing, and we are awaiting, Dave, the kick here any minute. It was delayed a little bit with Minnesota and North Carolina. That game was supposed to originally kick off at 8 o'clock, uh, but that game was pushed back because of yep. some weather in that one. Still seeing pretty much one, one and a half, somewhere in that ballpark there for North Carolina on the road. Yeah, uh, two. Mm. If we're gonna call two. it a consensus. Okay. There's more. There's more twos than one and a half, but it's sitting right there. Uh, another one where the total was on the move. I think we're gonna call it a close, fifty-three. So, yeah, this, this this will be fun. I I think we'll see a, a competitive game. 
and uh, I'm I'm leaning North Carolina, thinking under. But again, when I see the favorite on the road in a close pick 'em game, the power rating right. they're that yeah. much better. So just knowing that and knowing, okay, this is one of those ones. Now it opened, and wow, is that a penalty in the end zone, North Dakota? Yes, it State. is. Knocking at the yes. door, second goal again. Um, you're talking about like upsets, and it's so funny because we always remember the lines that are close. Like the game will finish 24 yep. 21, and the game will close three, and the total will be right around 45. And everybody goes, Man, how'd they do that? Now, I'm watching this game, and at, with Colorado and North Dakota State, it can't be 11. Like, there's no, no – I even if it doesn't – I mean, there's still a ton of time left. And I hate to say, like, you missed. But remember, there's games like this or like NC State that closed 32. And they're in a death match, uh, you know, tied Correct. 14. So, I think that's one of the takeaways. I was just to say, you know, the odds makers and the book guys used to love patting themselves on the back when they got it right. Well, don't forget, for as many as they get right or close, they get some wrong, too. And that's the beauty of this. There's, you're not trying to predict the score. You're just trying to predict which way people are going to bet. I yes. mean, Coastal Carolina, what did, what did that What did that close? I mean, they, they closed as dogs. That was Jackson three. Yeah, was that was a three. Yeah. yeah. That was, yeah, so, that was a three-pointer. And, yeah, that should that was way off. Absolutely way off. Four to three in the second quarter with a lot of time left, 10 minutes to go. On the road. Yeah. 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 On the road. Yep. Happens. The other game that just kicked off, by the way, they are off and running. North Carolina, Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota went three and out, punted it away. Uh, And now we've got uh, North Carolina right around midfield here. Uh, with the ball, and we'll keep an eye on that one. But don't forget, you know, another guy that feels like he's been playing college football forever, Cam Rising, uh, the quarterback (laughs) for Utah, is back. Uh, He is at home, number 12 Utah, by the way. A lot of people have picked Utah to win their Big 12. They're now in the Big 12, obviously. Uh, But I am not so sure of that. But Southern Utah is the team that they are playing here. I'm sure it will not be a whole lot of fun. But I don't think this is also the same Utah team. Uh, It's certainly a different conference for Utah. Different teams, different everything. They should be able to win Southern Utah. But, I, you know, I'm not running to the window and laying 30-some-odd points with Cam Rising uh, again in this. In fact, I would offer up. If any of these games with these, tri- you know, these 20, 30 point lines, Dave, uh, like Ohio State, for instance, who's laying now, it opened at 50 and a half, Dave, and I think it's finally come in the mid 40s now, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. You have to um, do something to get the money on the dog. You have I to. I know, exactly. Yeah. Right? You don't have you a have choice. You have to put it out there. Or, like, the, you know, people are like, oh, I have to take the points. A lot of times, no, you don't. But what you don't no. do is take the favorite. And the book knows Correct. that. That's, I call that the stop sign. We, you know, the book is trying to keep you off of Ohio State because, geez, when you look at that, you go, well, how's yep. Akron even score? Like, I, I, you can win that game in your sleep 47 nothing, something like that. So yep. the book is like, all right, you want to you, you want to play Ohio State? You want to use them in a teaser or money line parlay? There's not even a money line. That's the price is too high. You can't use them in a teaser. Uh, it's too many points. So a lot of times a lo- that number is as much to keep you off them as it is to get you to take the dog. Field goal Correct. good. North Dakota State, 20 to 14, four and a half minutes to go. Joe, at what point do we start talking about them winning this game? Like if they stop Colorado here and score again, either a field goal or a touchdown, 23-14 or 27-14, upset alert, outright? Well, here's the problem, though. They didn't stop Colorado. Colorado stopped Colorado. So, you know, I, I, and I'll give Colorado credit. They were backed into their own end zone there, and they did hold steady. They gave up a field goal there to make it 20-14. to 14. So they didn't give up the touchdown. The defense actually showed up there. But – 
I still have not seen anything from North Dakota State, truly, to expect North, uh, you know, Colorado to keep shooting itself in the foot would be a big ask. I would say now's probably a good time to get in it uh, if you're going to do it because it was minus 150 a minute ago uh, yep. in that spread there, Colorado. Mind you, it was a 10.5 closing line. I will also tell you that North Carolina State, the second half line, Dave, North Carolina State laying seven and a half wow. at home. They were wow. a 32 and a half point favorite. You can now get them at seven and a half in this game at home. And I would imagine the adjustments are coming uh, with yeah. North Carolina State. Without Big a doubt. Uh, Now's the time to break, jump in. I wanted to ask you about the Big 12. Uh, you know, you're talking about Utah and Utah, Southern Utah tonight, but like, Utah, pretty much a consensus favorite to to win the Big 12. And yep. the numbers are, I mean, in my opinion, uh, overwhelmingly skewed toward Utah. Look at that board, Joe. It's Kansas State and then everybody else. And <clears throat> I yep. can't say it's wrong where most of the teams are rated the same. But is there a is is there a needle in the haystack there? A team that you're looking at that you might be interested in that's not named Utah? Oh yes, I, I think they've. I think it's all wide open uh, there. I think these teams are going to devour themselves, and I think that there's a few teams on that list we'll talk about coming up that you have to get a ticket on sooner rather than later. sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live Prime Time here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe Ranieri alongside Dave Sherapan, and a uh, lot going on here right now uh, across the sports landscape. Here we'll start Major League Baseball. Uh, if you're just joining us, no score and a good one with Kansas City and uh, the Astros. They're in the bottom of the fifth. Nothing, nothing. Singer against Hunter Brown in that one, and uh, so the first five under Dave looking pretty good. 
in that game yes, there. Uh, the Phillies are up 5-4. What a comeback. They were losing 5-4 in this game. Uh, they were losing 4 nothing rather, yep. up until around the bottom of the sixth. Uh, and they have taken the lead now 5-4 to four on a couple of home runs. So uh, they are in the bottom of the eighth looking to add a run, runner on second and nobody out. So we'll see if they can add to that. Uh, and that's also a 2 nothing Toronto lead over Boston. I believe they're in the top of the ninth. Coming up, Dodgers-Baltimore in that game. That's your late-night game. But what's going on, Dave, in Colorado with, uh, with college football here? It was North Dakota State 20, Colorado 14. We still have, what, about four minutes left to go before the yep. break? But... You can get Colorado at a pretty good price now. Uh, you don't have to lay the 10 and a half. Uh, but do we trust them to win this game is the big question. I'm watching the game. I told you without sound. Some reason Terrell Owens is on the sideline as an advisor Why? for the receivers oh. for Colorado. I don't know. He looks great. T.O. looks great. Uh, they should probably maybe, you know, throw him out there. Maybe he can catch a pass or two. I don't know. Colorado's punting right now. Uh, a they stop got sacked. North Dakota State, yeah. One of those situations, again, we talked about it. If you think they can go down and score with 241 to go, play them right now because that line's going to go up. That was the first sack uh, of Shador Sanders tonight. So, I don't know. This is one of those ones you just start to watch and, like, you go, they're hanging around, they're hanging around. They're getting the belief. They believed before the game. The way they the way they played this first half, they believe now. And now it's real. Yes. Like, we're going to be yep. leading at halftime, barring a, a turnover disaster right here. They can extend this lead and have a two-score lead in Boulder. Maybe their sideline and some of their alumni were the only people that really thought this was possible. Perfect game for the books so far. I mean, it's headed to yep. be over. Uh, ideally, a score here is good for, for the pregame total. I don't know, Joe. It's slowed down, right? 70 was what we looked at before. It might be in, uh, that might be in a little bit of peril. What's the in-game uh, number? I, can't, I don't think that's even remotely close uh, to what is okay. going to eventually happen in this one they don't have it on the board here but i would imagine the books don't know what to do right now that's the problem 252 left to go uh north dakota state up six i would imagine and we know dave all the liability in the world was on colorado right colorado. Uh, yep. yeah all the tickets everybody was on colorado so uh the books are probably not going to give uh any sort of uh middling opportunity or try not to anyway here or open well, themselves so, up here for Colorado so State money. I mean, North Dakota State, right? The number's not up yet. Let's play odds maker right now. We have Colorado trailing 20 to 14, two and a half minutes to go, North Dakota State with the ball. Right. You know that there's people waiting to see Colorado be a dog. I yep. can't make them a dog yet. Not right now, but this is like what three and a half, two and a half. I still think the total is probably 68 and a half right now. Yep, they got 34, 34, 68, 68 and a half. Makes sense. Might even lean 67 and a half down a number. I don't know. What do you think, Joe? Is it time to make him a dog? Colorado, a dog? And not until uh, we see what happens here. I, I think if South Dakota State put uh, North Dakota State rather puts uh, points on the board, then yes. But right, I right. wouldn't just yet. Uh, I would not just yet. Although give North Dakota State great defensive stand. Colorado did play a little bit of defense there in their end uh, red zone. So uh, maybe the defenses have finally caught up here a little bit. Got a little something uh, going on. But if I'm let me ask you this. If you're North Dakota State, are you happy just to milk the clock and take the lead in? Yes. I'm not throwing it, score. right? I, no. I mean, we got to get a first down, right? The right. goal right now is to get a first down and see how much time we have left if we get the first down, when we get the first down. You don't want to give them the ball. All right. I just click refresh on my other book here. It's one and a half and 65 and a half. 
So the total's coming back down. Um, Colorado's still favored. Basically, it's a pick em. I love when they do that. They got one and a half is minus 110, and the money line is minus 110. Yep. If you're watching the show and you're looking at a book, do not lay one and a half minus 110. Just lay no. the 110 money line price because if it falls one with the game sitting on six now, it could be a Colorado one point win. One and a Correct. half, you lose. 110 money line, you win. So much better to you know lay the lay the money line rather than a point and a half. It doesn't seem like that important, but little stuff like that is important if you're doing the stuff in game. That's correct. Makes more sense uh, to go the other way there. Don't leave yourself open for liability because crazier things have certainly happened uh, there. We do have uh, Houston has scratched across a couple of runs here, Dave, in the bottom of the fifth, two nothing over Kansas City. Uh, runner on second with two outs here. So we really do need to get out of this inning uh, and stop the scoring for us. That would be fantastic. Uh, they are headed to uh, an intermission here and still no score, Dave. Uh, Minnesota and North Carolina, that was the other big game of the night that people were looking forward to, a battle of uh, ACC and Big Ten and uh, we had a fourth uh, or a, actually a really nice defensive stand by Minnesota who mm. stopped them on fourth and one at the uh, at their own 30 uh, yard line there. North Carolina came up empty and now North Carolina's defense just stuffed them, gets the ball back. So defenses uh, are the name of the game in that one. So I'll have an update on what the line is when in-game live primetime continues here on the grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 Hit Club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going in a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live, and we are prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe and Ari alongside uh, Dave Sherapan here as we have got uh, college football back in our lives, and we love it. Uh, currently, right now, a bunch of good ones, upsets happening. Uh, we'll start in Colorado, Dave, and, and here we go. We're thinking North Dakota State milking the clock, and they are marching down the field again. 
with an opportunity to put points on the board. I believe they crossed almost midfield here. They got about a buck 20 left to go. Big third down, but Colorado's in trouble here. 20 down, 20 to 14. And you had mentioned that the total was dropping and it doesn't look like they're going to get the first down. So it looks like it's going to be fourth and one from their 40. Could Colorado get the ball back here, Dave, with a opportunity to uh, maybe at least take the lead or put points on a board before the break? Either way, uh, this game has come to a screeching halt here compared to yep. what it was early on. That's what happens, right? You get one of these fast-paced games. Okay, so they call timeout. Colorado's going to force North Dakota State to make a decision to either go for it and or punt. So – I don't know. I feel like North Dakota State's going to go for it. Uh, just, I mean, they're playing to win. What do you got now. to lose? Yeah, I mean, it's, well, what you have to lose is the lead and all the momentum. You can kick it deep and play defense, that's fine. But if you kick it deep and they score, uh, that might be one of those ones that – Well, you, you make know, it a two-for-one, right? Because Colorado's right. going to get the ball in yeah. the second half. And... Phillies close it out, Joe. 5-4. Yeah, they one did. Win. Brandon one Marsh and Castellanos. Hey. Two home runs. That's uh, five runs and home runs they ended up getting. So pretty impressive right. stuff here. Yeah that, um, that was a good win. yeah, that was a very good win there. Uh, they did punt it, Dave, by the way. So And they downed it inside the five-yard line. So good job by uh, not taking any unnecessary risks. North Dakota State, Colorado will have it with about 45 seconds to go. But again, they don't need 45 seconds they, to, to score. Like, that's... That's the crazy part about Colorado mm -hmm. and Shador. Uh, it could be two catches, three catches, 12 seconds, touchdown, 80 yards. So they got to be very careful uh, with that one there. Uh, we have got a, wow, it's uh, getting ugly. Minnesota, North Carolina, Dave, still no score here. Six minutes ago in the first. Defenses are, are kind of the name of the game in this one so far as this uh, Max Brosmer from New Hampshire is your new Minnesota mm. quarterback, and he looks like he played at New Hampshire uh, right now. So things aren't <laughs> going very mean? well at Minnesota uh, as he's – well, he's one of three with uh, with two sacks and minus yards. I'm not sure you how you do that here. So uh, right. North Carolina still hanging in there. Under is looking uh, halfway decent in that one. Utah did score, I believe. They are up. 7 nothing three minutes ago in the first there. And the other game, too, was Illinois taking on Eastern Illinois, Dave. They're halfway through yeah. the first quarter. No score. Illinois, again, was a monster favorite in this one. But yep. careful what you wish for with some of these uh, early season games here because uh, they just kicked off the second half, North Carolina State and Western Carolina. We laid the 7.5. From 32 and a half to seven and a half. That's what North Carolina State is laying right now. And uh, you got to think this might be a bigger and better effort by North Carolina State in the second half. Uh, but if you're the book, where do you go from 32 and a half? Like, what are you supposed to do at a tied game at home? And you're a top 25 team. Where, where are you supposed to go with that? You can't make it under a touchdown. Right. I was I was going to say between seven and a half and ten and a half. That's yeah, right. Yeah, we're trying right. to decide that number, right? It has to be over seven. But how far do I want to go? Because right. I think I think there's people looking to take the favorite at a much cheaper yes. price. We we've yes. we've done that. We've educated the audience to do that that's watching us. And it's a natural inclination to go. They can't possibly play as bad as they did. They're going to catch some momentum. She makes some adjustments, whatever the words are, they're going to win and at least cover 10. Yep. So I think yep. that's where, I, I think that's where you try to find the price discovery, try to find the number. Um, I, I got to ask you if, before, you know, Cam's coming in in a little bit. Do you believe what Shohei Otani's doing? Like, seriously, do you believe what he's – he's going to get 50-50, Joe. He's got 42 steals he, out of 46 attempts. Yeah. Bet him to steal a base tonight. Yep. I I expect him to hit two home runs and steal two bases. Find that prop.
the sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes. Jefferson a better player, if you want to believe that. I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Oh, boy, getting good here. They've made it down inside the five-yard line with two seconds left to go. Can wow. Colorado, will they settle for the three or will they go for a touchdown here? That's going to be the big question because uh, they're only going to have time for one play here, Dave. Something tells me uh, they'll probably just take the points, right? I mean, kick the field goal. Yeah. Go in, down three, and then let's see what that number is because I do believe they take the opening kickoff here in the second half. But that is, uh, so far, upset alert here in Colorado. Uh, upset alert uh, in NC State, number 24, North Carolina State, is tied with Western Carolina, 14 apiece. They're in the third quarter in that game there. Uh, boy, oh boy, this should be uh, a whole lot of fun here tonight. We can get a couple of uh, big upsets with a couple of big dogs winning outright tonight. And I don't know that North Dakota State would be considered that big a upset. What do I mean? They were getting 10 and a half, but this is one of the best FBS teams, FCS teams there is here. They, they Every year, this team is, you know, top of the class. So it's yeah. not crazy when them coming in. And it's not like they're playing. USC or you know what I mean Oklahoma like they're playing Colorado like let's not get I don't know that this is a <laughs> if it wasn't for Dion would anybody even consider this an upset is my question that's a good question I don't know I I uh, maybe not nearly as big of an upset no I think that's right. a, that's that's a fair assessment that's they're being held to different standards because it's, I know, agree. It's, it's, it's unrealistic, right? It's unrealistic. And, and really, I mean, the amount of turnover, would you say they had 50 new kids on the team? Something like 55 that. 55 right? new just, scholarship kids this right. year. Yep. In, yeah, in the so transfer portal. The amount of transfer portal guys like on regular teams is a lot. That, that That's right. crazy. Field goal. Good. Yep. 2017 at the half. So Woo. click refresh. That's Woo. probably what. What, what do you think, Dave? Call it. What is it? Uh, what do you three think? And a half. Down three, That's getting the, the ball. Is that it? Three and yeah. a half? It's. It says three and a half. Yeah. Wow. Not four and a half. That's a little light. Yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half is a money line bet. I mean, it comes yeah, with three I and a half. You're just betting them to win a game. We got to 
we got to put a little extra on that, boys. That's a little. That's what that's I'm thinking. A little bit light. Come on. Yes. Yeah. That's what no. that's way light at three and a half. Way light. And Colorado gets the, the ball to start the second ball, half. Correct. So now I know it's yep. light. Because that, that should be no no. If 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 it's our joint, we're at six and a half. We're gonna win this game. I agree. By three. Uh yeah, we're not letting you lay no, no, no. We're not letting you lay three and a half. Um Joe, there's a lot of good games this weekend. And yes. you know, the boys did a good job with the graphics. Um, I, I'll start off with the game of most interest to me early Saturday morning, uh, out West Saturday at noon, you know, it Penn state laying points on the road to West Virginia, my guys, McAfee and the boys are going there. They're, they're closing school. Like they're closing elementary, middle and high school in the entire County down there for this game, because so many people are coming. And it is basically their Super Bowl. Um, upset alert. Uh, uh, Mountaineers could win this game. Like, don't tell me that because I'm going to be bummed out on Saturday if that's the case. Well, you know, and I, I know. I mean, listen, Franklin went out of his way oh. to embarrass his team last year, didn't he? Uh, so it's, uh, you know, what goes around comes around also, here also. uh they do have a uh listen I, I like somebody's betting west virginia because this was 10 and a half 11 dave yes, over the summer yep. and yep. now we're yep. down to eight and yep. yeesh uh somebody is definitely betting uh west virginia at and not an easy place to play right at all no. so no. I do like the offense of West Virginia. The big question, of course, is going to be their defense. But you got a lot of returning, a lot of returning players um, back on the offensive. You got both running backs, I believe. Both stud running yep. backs are back for yep. them. Uh, Alar is back, the quarterback. Uh, yep. it, it feels like we might not. It could be a good over in this game, too, because I do think Green and uh, both his top receivers, West Virginia's offense, Yep. I think they'll have some success here in uh, in another year, but that's a tough place to play. And do you really trust uh, Franklin in this kind of spot? I mean, Garrett Green, Jaheim White, C.J. Donaldson, they got their uh, tight end, Cole Taylor, back. They, they should be able to put up some points, West Virginia. The question is, do we trust Franklin and Penn State to pull away here? And I think they'll win, but will they win by 10? I, I hate when you make good arguments against my team. That's not. That's I'm not just good. saying. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's. It's. Um. Um. I have a little trepidation. I have a little hesitation. And they won I'm nine not, games I mean, last year, know. didn't they? West Virginia. It wasn't like they were a six-win team. I can't remember how many games they won, but they. they I they think were they won nine. Five, five, five. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, this is a big game. It's. Again, they canceled school, for goodness sakes. It's a national holiday there tomorrow, and they're getting ready for the oh, game on Saturday. Oh, forget it. They're going to be beside themselves there. Beside neutral themselves. Neutral site game. Neutral site game at the same time. Clemson mm. and Georgia. And, I mean, wow. Everybody's got Georgia. Every book on planet Earth has Georgia as the consensus favorite, the number one team in the country, the lowest odds to win it all. Clemson. A lot of questions. I mean, questions all over the place. Dabo canceled a radio show that he did for like 15 years because he didn't want to take callers anymore. Can you imagine if we took callers here on this show? That'd be actually kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, I can't help but love Georgia. Georgia has really, over the years here in Vegas, uh, I've been a big fan. Bet on them multiple times in big games, and they usually deliver. Um, Clemson keep this close. I don't think Clemson's winning a game. I'll say that right now. I don't think there's a chance in hell Clemson wins a game. You can clip this <laughs> if Clemson wins a game and tell me I was wrong. But I like Georgia, Joe. I like the fact that Minnesota just shanked a 12-yard uh, field goal, and it's now nothing, nothing against North Carolina still. Uh, I also like the fact that uh, this was when last time they played, right? Wasn't it what three years ago, two years ago, three years ago? 
they did the same thing. They opened up the season, and it was 10-3. So it was all about the defenses uh, back then. I I can see it being all about the defenses again here. uh, I I don't like Clemson. I don't like Cade Klubnik. Uh, I think they are... This is a pressure cooker of a year here, Mr. I don't go into the portal. Uh, I get all my homegrown talent here at Clemson. We'll we'll see how that works for them. Uh, I'm a little worried about that uh, with Clemson here. But I do think Carson Beck, he's a Heisman contender. He's actually the front runner, I believe. Is he not uh, the Georgia quarterback here? This is the kind yeah. of game in the past that Kirby Smart goes in guns a blazing and Georgia comes out winning by, you know, 20. So that's yeah. the uh, Mercedes Benz stadium in Atlanta. I, I know Clemson travels well, so yeah. I, I don't know that it'll be that big an advantage, but to me, this just comes down to, uh, you know, if this was Alabama, take Georgia's name, put Alabama. And I don't, I think this is just, this is it's 13 and a half for a reason, not because Clemson is a powerhouse. They're not. Uh, what, and I think they're going to the finish third to the U the in the U? ACC. The U. They're going to finish third to the U in the ACC, that being the Clemson Tigers this year. Of course, Miami, Miami is going to have to win every game after losing to Florida because that's how oh, they do win? it. I'm just saying that's usually how it works with them. Uh, so we've got all sorts of issues here. We got a breakthrough. We'll do that next here on the grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show, focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of of depth there. Francis Tiafoe, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton could actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on SportsGrid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 hit club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than C.D. Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starter running back there. They're going in a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about C.D. Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live primetime here on a college football Thursday. It is back, and already we got a couple of upsets brewing, which means it's time to dive into the dumpster, and nobody does it better than Cam Stewart in the house joining us here. Let's go. We missed the dumpster diving during college football, Cam. (laughs) You and I will be doing a lot of it on Saturday uh, together this season. So there is not like a good dumpster dive on college football nights. No, 
No, this is going to be great, Joe. Yeah, what? Who, who do you like today? Oh, Rice on the money line. We're going to go. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait for Saturday. And know what the best thing is, Joe? Now that Scotty Scheffler shot six under today, that golf tournament's oh. like dead to me. Like, honest to God, this format, yep. this whole thing, I'm like, I was all excited to say this, this just ends for us. Hey, TV guys, yep. are you enjoying this? You're basically going to lose 80% of your audience. People go, okay, he won. We're done. Now yeah, we're all definitely right. going to watch college. Yeah. By the way, uh, Taylor Swift's uh, and Travis Kelsey's uh, that that horse is running at Woodbine on Saturday, Joe. So we'll ooh, have a little chat ooh, about that oh, too. Can't ooh. wait for the Swifties, just like they did with me and Morenci's horse. Hey, losers, bet it up, and we'll go the other way. Never forget the phone call. Why are you guys leaving? Because we're yeah. broke. Thanks. All the loaders like, but we were winning like five times the amount because all your, all the guys who loved your show were oh, betting God. on your horse. I go, we told them not to. They not wouldn't to. listen. <laughs> Our horse is going off at one to five, Joe, and he finishes nine. Like, I'm just like, you guys are killing us. You're literally killing us financially. Like, they just didn't even, like, nice friends, eh, Dave? Like, we lo- we really yeah. appreciate your support, but thanks. Here's another 20,000. Right. Hey, trainer, yep. eat my arm. Like, you don't need a horse. It's yeah. like, more hay, more hay, more carrots. <laughs> anyway, this, uh, this uh, Minnesota game is uh, getting interesting, guys. I'm on the under here. Yes. Uh, I don't know how you feel. North Carolina is starting to get a little bit of rhythm going right now, but we expected a dog fight in this game. Uh, Joe? Oh, actually, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. You asked me about the dumpster. I yes. smell something around the back of the Chinese Uh-oh. restaurant. Sacramento oh. State. We're going FCS Ooh. style. Sa- Sacramento State versus uh, uh, San Jose State. Cordero, yeah. remember Cordero, that quarterback? He uh, actually was in the Seahawks camp. He did okay, but they, they cut him. Uh, I'm going to take a shot with Sacramento State plus one and a half, Dave. Bad number. I could be in trouble there because it was like two and a half, three. But I still think it's such a small game. I'm going to take Sacramento. I like these small schools going up. San Jose State's losing a lot of guys. Me and Bovey and Gabe talked about that game. That's what I'm doing. That's my dumpster dive special. I think it goes off at uh, 10.05 Eastern time. So Sacramento State, a lot of very famous. Gabe, I got a trivia question for you and Joe. What's that? Sacramento State, most famous uh, alum quarterback that uh, played in the NFL. Yeah, you know, when I was young, 80s. Dave, Dave Craig? No, Dave Craig actually is from Milton, Milton uh, in Florida. Joe knows the area. He's a, he lives in the state yep. of Florida. Okay. It was Ken O'Brien. Ken O'Brien. Oh, okay. Went to Sacramento yes, State. And yes. two, two yes. legends of yes. the CFL, Ricky Ray, Hall of Famer in the Canadian Football League. Sacramento okay. State yes. loves that. It's like a hotbed for the CFL. So I'm just what I'm going to take right there. I'm going to take a shot with uh, Sacramento State. Let's let's do this. Yeah, I Dave, I told you, uh, you know me, Joe. You guys, Joe, we're going to get worse on Saturday too. They'll be it's going to be terrible. Is, so there's there's <laughs> games on Saturday. I just want to yes. give uh, uh, give yes. you a couple of minutes to to kind of post up or or let yep. everybody know. We were talking during a break about Miami going to Florida, playing that one. I was interested in your thoughts there. And Notre Dame going to Texas Tech in the primetime slot late. I I just can't find a reason to take Notre Dame. I want to. I'm taking Texas I'm, uh, Texas Tech in that game. I think they're a totally different team. I remember Ooh. when we were doing in-game live how many games they lost because of Jimbo Fisher and that staff. Like, they were in games against Alabama and stuff. We bring in, like, a better regime, uh, good transfers. They already got, like, the talent there. Notre Dame's a great program, and I really like their coach, and I like a lot of things about them. But – I think Texas A&M is the better team. I'm going to be taking Texas A&M. As for Florida and uh, Miami, Miami. Uh, we mm. talked about this with Bovey the other night. I actually kind of agree with him. I think there's going to be points in that game. I know Gabe mm. was leaning to Florida. I originally was. I'm kind of going back and forth with this game. I don't really have confidence on the side, but we're going to take the over. I lean to Miami. And, Dave, the one I wanted to talk to you about, since you're a Penn State Nittany Lion, yeah. Uh, my uncle went to West Virginia, um, backyard bro. Oh, no, that's with Pitt. But basically, Pitt, yeah. he's, West Virginia hates everybody, and everybody hates yep, them, yep, and they would yep, love to beat yep. Penn State. I'm kind yep. of thinking the Mountaineers with eight and a half. Didn't they give them fits the I last know. time back in the day, Dave? It was a very, mm-hmm. very tight game. What do you think? Oh, it's it's one of those ones where, as as an alumni, I mean, the, the, the expectations are so high for Penn State mm-hmm. this year at least making a playoff. And then they start off on the road at West Virginia. And, you know, I talked to the boys. 
McAfee and fellas are going to mm-hmm. do the show there tomorrow. They closed school. All oh. the whole county closed <laughs> school, elementary school, middle well, school, yes, and high school yes, because yes, of the yes. traffic yeah. and the amount of Marenzi's like, who cares? They don't go to school anyway in West Virginia. Yeah. Like, that, that was a great joke last night. Actually, he was on fire. I'm like, man, I was just waiting for him to say it. He hit it right on cue. It's like, wow. Man. Kids from West Virginia missed a day of school. Oh, God forbid. Their, their scholastic <sighs> career is going to go down the toilet. Like, give me a break. How about these guys really not going to school? Anyway, no offense. I love Maccabees. My guy he went to West Virginia. Right. You know, a lot of guys from West Virginia, great. Just, I'm just yeah. saying, I really don't think the one day of school is really going to affect anybody there. But uh, Them plus the point. Be <laughs> and I'm, I'm nervous. They could oh. be the money line. Like, this could, be, uh, this could end up putting Penn State. Yeah, on the defense and having to, you know, get to ten wins with this one as a loss is going to be tough. So, yeah, I'll I'll be watching it. I'll be probably. What, what do you guys think about this That's Orioles Dodgers game? Like we got two gas cans going. Is is the over too obvious? Oh. We were on the over the other night. It was free money. Uh, I can't yeah. I can't say no. I got to go on the over here with these bullpens it, and these guys. I'm with are bad. you. Home run. We might be falling into over. a trap. We might be falling into uh, a trap, just, Joe. Like. Usually when it's too easy, it's not. But I just look at these guys and go, horrible whips, horrible everything. Just I don't know how it's, you know, don't get nine runs in this game. But the line, yep. the line should be nine and a half, not eight and a half. Just I saying. agree. Yeah, I agree. And I think they happen early too. So I wouldn't even, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to first rooting five. for the uh, for the first five over too, because mm-hmm. I think uh, I think they're gonna get lit up both of these uh, pitchers, yep. especially Miller. Home run props around the horn, one for everyone, Cam. One for yep. everyone. Just bet Touchdown. everyone are going to get a ton of runs. Larry Hill with Touchdown North Carolina. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. And you have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. When you're really, really amazing like this, people kind of take it for granted. Same with Otani, right? People will sort of see, oh, Otani did this, Otani did that, and it sort of, you know, becomes normalized a little bit. But to put in context, Aaron Judge joins the 1,000 Hit Club, reaches, um, gets it done. So earlier this month, he was uh, the fastest player to reach uh, 300 home runs ever. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The leftover language would be the million shy of what Jefferson makes Jefferson a better player. If you want to believe that, I'm not sure I buy that he's that much better than CeeDee Lamb. Tony Pollard's gone. He's now with the Titans. I was with the Titans a couple weeks ago. Uh, he'll be their starting running back there. They're going a different direction in Dallas, but it's all about CeeDee Lamb right now, the first of the other deals that they have to get done. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in In Game Live Prime Time here as we get ready to close out this edition. Cam Stewart, Gabe Berenci coming your way next. We'll hand it off, Joe Ranieri, alongside Dave Sherapan here. And uh, Sherapan, this is uh, 
our final gig together for this month. Yep. Uh, so this was a, uh, a pleasure, uh, by all means. Uh, we, uh, we're going to have, uh, of course, uh, special programming here now throughout uh, yeah. college and the NFL season on Mondays and Thursdays, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pro football today, we're going to do a, a show, I guess, and um, leading into another in-game live. Uh, everything's changing. Seasons change. You know, football starts and making moves. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, man, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure doing the shows with you. You know, Mondays, Thursdays, and you know, we'll see if uh, the cycle of life brings us back together to do it. But I know. I mean, there's been a lot of fun moments, and we probably should do a blooper reel or something. I mean, it's just been nonstop laughing and entertainment. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we only got a couple minutes left, and I know you've been paying attention to this all week. And, I mean, we did have breakfast together uh, just a week ago yes. here in Vegas. That was great to see you in person. Um, two teams finally named their uh, starting quarterbacks this week. Yes. One of them being my nighttime in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Steelers behind me. Um, Russell Wilson is officially the starting quarterback. And today, the Patriots named Jacoby Brissett to be the starting quarterback, which I don't disagree with because Drake May is going to get beat up, destroyed, hit yes. all over. And like our guy Preston knows, he saw a young guy get beat up, you know, punctured body parts and all this other stuff in Indy with Andrew Luck. So nobody wants to see that for Drake May. But which team do you think is actually going to get over their win total, Joe? The New England Patriots at four and a half slash five or the Pittsburgh Steelers at eight and a half? I don't know if either oh, I, one. Is it both one or neither? I it, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh always goes over their win total with Tomlin. Always. Wow. Even when you think they're going to be terrible. And, and we thought they were going to be terrible last year, and they still went over the win total last year. So... Uh, you can see the seven and a half there, which is what I uh, is what it was. And yeah. yeah, there's things you can always count on. The defense and and Watt and company will win themselves a couple of ugly games. Uh, and listen, congratulations, Russell Wilson. Uh, here's my question, Dave: How many games before Russell Wilson is benched or hurt uh, before we get Fields in there? Uh, mine is two. Over or under two games uh, here because I don't see that lasting at all with Russell Wilson, especially uh, when they got to play that, uh, what, the second game against uh, Denver, I believe, who I don't think likes Russell Wilson very much. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to stay positive, Joe. The season hasn't even started yet. You're already talking about injuries and things like that. I want like that. Fields. Um, I wanted Fields as I your quarterback. Do too. I yep. would prefer Fields. The other thing yep. I have to address before we go, is that yesterday, and we weren't yes. doing the show, but I know you saw it and paid attention, the official end of the baseball season in Pittsburgh. Paul Skeens pitches yeah. five innings, 82 pitches, and leaves the game up 10-3. to three. I yep. mean, you want to talk about a number for in-game live. I don't even know if there was a number, seven innings, seven runs down in the fifth. It might have been too high. Two in the seventh, three in the eighth, and yep. six in the ninth, and the Cubs yep. win 14 to 10. They not only covered Correct. a run line, the money line, they covered a field goal. Yep. Joe, he's not going to win rookie of the year. That's it. It's over. Nope. Jackson Merrill nope. wins rookie of the year. It's done. Nope. And the problem is that out of sight, out of mind, right? Nobody's talking about. The fact that he was still throwing 100 miles an hour on a gun yesterday, he still went, you know, he threw 80-some-odd pitches and only given up two earned runs. Uh, but the problem is that, you know, Pittsburgh set a record for being the first team to lose a seven-run lead after from the seventh inning on this year. So that's what everyone was talking about, unfortunately. So, uh, hey, listen, I think if he can come out and he does something special, maybe the next start or last start and Jackson Merrill disappears, but I think we both know – that's probably not happening. So uh, it was a heck of a run by Skeens there. And those of you that ran to the window and took a ticket, uh, well, you can always hang that up, put it on a, uh, you know, a pedestal somewhere there and uh, remember the good old days uh, because Jackson Merrill is winning that one there. Dave, enjoy it, uh, my friend. Enjoy the rest yes, of your evening. 
uh and of course uh in game live prime time will be back again tomorrow night in the meantime it's sports rage gamer and cam stewart next year on the grid enjoy your night we'll see you again soon